This is my old Briggs & Stratton engine that I designed over a year ago. I had gotten a comment on that video of somebody asking if this engine could run on a vacuum. And today, I'm going to try to do just that. So the first thing that I did was I adjusted the valve timing. Instead of the camshafts being 90 degrees from each other, uh, they are now 180 degrees. So that every time the piston rises, at least one of the valves will be open. I also switched out these 2x2 two two round bricks on the valves for some 1x1 one one cones so that it would let more air through. But whenever I got all that done, I noticed the valves weren't sealing very well, so I switched out the valve rods for a shorter axle. But then, the valves weren't lifting high enough. So I put a 1x1 one one round plate on the bottom to raise them up just a little bit. When I designed this engine, I wanted it to be as realistic as possible, so I incorporated ports for the intake and exhaust. So that saved me a little bit of time and work, and all I did was I connected them both together with a single hole on the outside. There was a lot of friction between the cylinder walls and the piston, so I did something I call cylinder stretching, where I basically push outward on the inside of the cylinders just a little bit, and that moves the cylinder walls outward just enough to where it reduces the amount of friction. Another modification I needed to make was the head. See, this head was made to be removed for display. I replaced all the tiles on the top with regular plates so it would create a good seal. I also figured that these tiny flywheels on the front weren't going to provide enough inertia to keep the engine running, so I decided to put a larger flywheel on. So after the first test, I noticed something wasn't right. So I opened it up and I saw that the valves were actually spinning whenever they were popping open. So I added a little guide on the inside to keep it from doing that. After a few tests, the crankshaft had broken twice, so I decided to redesign it and make it to where it wouldn't break. After many, many, many different tests, I found that the flywheel that I had put on was actually too small and the engine couldn't keep running. So I made an even bigger flywheel that used two of these large tires connected together with a rod. eight or something. I stopped counting a long time ago. Let's see if it works. for hours. Okay, let me try a few more modifications and see if we can get a better run than that. Alright, let's try again. Yes? Oh, it runs. 
Finally, after tons of testing and hours of work, I finally got the Briggs & Stratton engine to run on a vacuum. It was way slower than the original one, and not realistic at all, but I feel like this was a success. Well, this thing right here is the perfect example of why I don't make vacuum engines, because I wind up spending way too many hours trying to get it to work, and it barely wants to run at all. So, but I gave it a shot. It didn't really work too good. Uh, if you guys want to give this a shot, there's uh, a link down in the description where you can get instructions for this thing. Uh, go ahead and modify it. Uh, if you decide to make a video on it, be sure to tag me in. I want to see if you guys can do it and if you can, how you did it. Because for me, it was not very good. Um, but yeah, man, this was probably the most work I've ever put into a project. And I think this is the worst outcome I've had for a project, to be honest. Thank you guys for watching. Um, I tried, and I tried harder than any of y'all can imagine. Maybe in the future I'll come back to it. Maybe I'll try this again. Uh, but for now, I think I'm going to put on the brakes on vacuum engines for the time being because clearly I can't do it. Uh, I've had a couple people tell me that lubrication is a good idea but I really don't want to get my bricks all oily and disgusting. So for now, we're going to stick to Power Functions motors. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Like I said, you guys can try this out, link in the description. Good luck if you decide to try, and uh, I'll see you in the next one.